Insights channel, Steve here. Today I'm going to show you the dramatic account of the very famous story of Joseph. Joseph in Egypt and when his ten brothers came to visit him. I know a lot of people really like the story of Joseph from the Bible, but you've got to hear what it sounds like from the book of Jasher. Well, it's far more dramatic, even than what it states in the Bible. It's just a fantastic account of the story of Joseph, captive down in Egypt, and then becoming second Pharaoh, and then for a while becoming Pharaoh himself. And his account with his brethren. Of course, it was his brethren who sold him into slavery. So many years later, when he came down to Egypt, not recognizing Joseph now as the governor, because they sold him to a slave when he was 17, and the next they saw him was when he was about 30 odd, didn't recognize him, but he recognized them, and he tested them severely. And in the book of Joshua, it shows the sons of Jacob, as, I won't say they have supernatural powers, but they are incredibly strong. And in fact, two of them slew all the people in, in seven towns, Simeon and Levi. So they did have incredible strength, like Samson later in time. Incredible strength given to them by God. Very, very interesting. So this story of Joshua is, I like the book of Joshua, it's, uh, it's incredibly dramatic. It's like a journalist writing about biblical history events as they happened. I don't know who wrote the book of Joshua, but it's incredibly well written, I must say, from the ancient Hebrew. So here you got, here's chapter 51 from the book of Joshua. And in my book, it's Joshua Insights, book two. And Jacob afterward heard that there was corn in Egypt. And he called his sons to go to Egypt to buy corn. For upon them also did the famine prevail, and he called unto his sons, saying, Behold, I hear this corn in Egypt, and all the people of the earth go there to purchase. Now therefore, why will you show yourselves satisfied before the whole earth? Go you also down to Egypt, and buy us a little corn amongst those that come there, that we may not die. And the sons of Jacob hearkened to the voice of their father, and he rose up to go down to Egypt in order to buy corn amongst the rest that came there. And Jacob their father commanded them, saying, When you come into the city, do not enter together in one gate, on account of the inhabitants of the land. And the sons of Jacob went forth, and they went to Egypt. And the sons of Jacob did all as their father commanded them. And Jacob did not send Benjamin, for he said, Lest an accident might befall him on the road like his brother. And ten of Jacob's sons went forth. And whilst the sons of Jacob were going on the road, they repented of what they had done to Joseph. And they spoke to each other, saying, We know that our brother Joseph went down to Egypt, and now we will seek him where we go. If we find him, we will take him from his master for a ransom, and if not by force, we will die for him. So they're still thinking 20 years in the past, when Joseph was only a strapping youth, about 17, not realizing now he's the governor of the land of Egypt. And the sons of Jacob agreed to this thing, and strengthened themselves on account of Joseph, to deliver him from the hand of his master. And the sons of Jacob went to Egypt. When he came near to Egypt, they separated from each other, and they came through ten gates of Egypt, and the gatekeepers wrote their names on that day and brought them to Joseph in the evening. The reason for this was it was in the second year uh, of the seven year famine in Egypt, according to Joseph's own dreams to Pharaoh, that had seven years of good harvest, and now they were into the second year of bad harvest. And Joseph also realized that his brothers would come down there to seek after corn. So he'd given instruction to the gatekeepers to write down the names of everybody who came in the gates. Smart man. 
And so Joseph read the names from the hand of the gatekeepers of the city. He found that his brethren had entered in the ten gates of the city. And Joseph at that time commanded that it should be proclaimed throughout the land of Egypt, saying, Go forth, all ye to store guards. Close all the corn stores, let only one remain open, that those who come may purchase from it. Now, I don't know why Joseph's brothers, they thought that Joseph, because he was incredibly good looking, they might find him in the whorehouses, right? <laughs> I don't know why. So anyway, eventually, because Joseph gave him command for his guards to find his brothers and bring them straight to him. And those, oh, it says here, Joseph continued to send 16 servants to seek his brothers. And they went and spread themselves in the four corners of the city. And four of the servants went to the house of the harlots, and they found the ten men there seeking their brother. And those four men took them and brought them for Joseph. They bowed him down to the ground. They bowed down to the ground, and Joseph was sitting upon his throne in his temple, clothed in princely garments, and upon his head was a large crown of gold, and all the mighty men were sitting around him. And the sons of Jacob saw Joseph and his figure and comeliness and dignity and of countenance seemed wonderful in their eyes, and again bowed down to him to the ground. And thus, you know, this is fulfilling the dream that Joseph had when he was a teenager, that all his brethren would bow down to him, and all the stars of heaven would bow down to his star. He was being fulfilled. And Joseph saw his brethren, they knew him not, but they knew him not, for Joseph was very great in their eyes. Therefore they knew him not. And Joseph spoke to them, saying, From whence come ye? And they all answered and said, And of course Joseph didn't speak directly to them. He spoke to his brethren through a translator, so they wouldn't recognize his voice. Thy servants have come from the land of Canaan to buy corn, for the famine prevails throughout the earth. And thy servants heard there was corn in Egypt. So they come amongst the others, comers, to buy corn for their support. And Joseph answering them said, If you come to purchase, as you say, why do you come through ten gates of the city? It can only be that you come to spy out the land. Of course, Joseph knows they're his brothers, but on account of the way they treated him, he's going to test them to see if they've changed, or they're still the rogues they were when he was a teenager. And they all gathered together and asked Joseph, and said, Not so, my lord. Oh, we're not spies. We are right, thy servants are not spies. We have come to buy corn, for thy servants are all brothers, sons of one man, the land of Canaan. And my father commanded us, saying, When you come to the city, do not enter in one gate. And Joseph again answered them and said, That is the thing which they spoke unto you. You come to spy through the land. Therefore you all came through ten gates of the city. You come to see the nakedness of the land. Now Joseph is mocking him. And Joseph said unto him, And have you then sought him throughout the earth? Talking about his brother, lost brother, Joseph. That there only remain Egypt for you to seek him in? What also... Should your brother do in the houses of harlots, although he was in Egypt? Have you not said, You are from the sons of Isaac, the son of Je Abraham? And what shall the sons of Jacob then do in the houses of harlots? And he said to him, Because we heard that Ishmaelites stole him from us, and it was told unto us they sold him in Egypt. And I serve our brothers very comely, well favoured. So we thought he would surely be in the house of harlots, Therefore thy servants went there to seek him, give ransom for him. And Joseph still answered them, saying, Surely you speak falsely, utter lies, to say of yourselves you're the sons of Abraham. As Pharaoh liveth, you're spies. Therefore have you come to the houses of harlots, that you should not be known. And Joseph said unto them, And now, if you find him, and his master require you a great price, will you give it for him? They said, It shall be given. And he, said unto, and he said unto them, And if his master will not consent to part with him for a great price, what will you do unto him on his account? And they answered, saying him, 
he will not give him unto us, we will slay him, and take our brother and go away. And Joseph said unto him, It is a thing that I have spoken to you, your spies. We have come to slay the inhabitants of the land. For we heard that two of your brethren smote all the inhabitants of Shechem, the land of Canaan, on account of your sister. And you come now to do the like in Egypt, on account of your brother. Only hereby shall I know that you are true men. You will send home one from amongst you to fetch your youngest brother from your father and bring him here unto me. By doing this thing, I will know your rights. And Joseph called to seventy of his mighty men, and he said unto them, Take these men and bring them into the ward, in other words, into the prison. And the mighty men took the ten men, they laid hold of them and put them in the ward, and in the ward three days. And on the third day, Joseph had them brought out of the ward. He said unto them, Do this for yourselves, if you be true men, so you may live. One of your brethren shall be confined in the prison, while you go and take home the corn for your household in the land of Canaan, and fetch your youngest brother. Bring him here unto me. I may know you are true men when you do this thing. And Joseph went out from them and came into the chamber and wept a great weeping. For his pity was excited for them. Of course, he hadn't seen his brethren for 20 years. You imagine the emotion, how it was for Joseph. He had to put on this tough face towards his brethren because he was determined to test them, see if they were still villains and scoundrels that sell people into slavery, like they did to him, or whether they'd actually changed. Of course, they had changed. But this story is uh, its very emotional. Some of it's happy, laughter, and some of it's tragic. And Joseph went out from them and came into the chamber and wept a great weeping, for his pity was excited for them. He washed his face, returned to them again, and he took Simeon from them and ordered him to be bound. But Simeon was not willing to be done so, for he was a powerful man, and they could not bind him. And Joseph called unto his mighty men, seventy valiant men, came before him, with drawn swords in their hands, and the son of Jacob were terrified at them. And Joseph said unto them, Seize this man, confine him in prison, until his brethren come to him. And Joseph's valiant men hastened, and all laid hold on Simeon to bind him. And Simeon gave a loud and terrible shriek, and a cry was heard at a distance. And all the valiant men of Joseph were terrified at the sound of the shriek. They fell upon their faces, greatly afraid, and fled. All the men that were with Joseph fled, for they were greatly afraid for their lives. Only Joseph and Manasseh's son remained there. Manasseh, the son of Joseph, saw the stone of Simeon, and he was exceedingly wroth. And Manasseh, the son of Joseph, rose up to Simeon, and Manasseh smote Simeon a heavy blow with his fist against the back of his neck, and Simeon was stilled of his rage. And Manasseh laid hold of Simeon, and seized him violently, and he bound him, and brought him into the house of prison, and all the sons of Jacob were astonished at the act of the youth. Now here's a situation, of course, where Joseph's brothers were not accustomed to. They were not accustomed to someone else as strong as they were, not realizing that Joseph was their brother and that Manasseh was their nephew, who had inherited the same supernatural strength. Simeon said unto his brethren, None of you must say that this is the smiting of an Egyptian. But it's a smiting of the house of my father. They recognized right away that, hey, there's something wrong in this situation. Well, notice how Simeon simply can't grasp the thought that the reason that Manasseh could bind him was because he was his brother's son. Amazing how God kept that knowledge from Simeon and his brethren until it was a correct time for Joseph to reveal to them all that he was indeed their long lost brother whom they had sold into slavery over 20 years earlier. Well, that's just the very first part of this story, and I will be reading it on audio in, in quite a few parts. I think it's a fascinating story. It occupies about 50 pages in this book of Jasher, in uh, what's Jasher Insights Book 2 of mine. Now, I encourage people to do get my Insights books, get my Insights book of Jasher Insights, and Jubilee's Insights, Enoch Insights, Esther's Insights, Eden Insights, 
Asda's insights, Tesla told Patriarch's insights. I will say there is a uh, there is a difference in, in the Testament talk patriarchs. It says in that one uh, something slightly different as regards Simeon there uh, in that moment when he was taken to prison. And this book says he resisted them. In the other book, it said he didn't resist them. So, which book's right? Well, as far as I'm concerned, there are only details, but I, I find it very interesting studying the Hebrew books, um, gleaning new details of the stories in the Bible. I find it absolutely fascinating. But that is a little bit from the book of Joshua. I will continue that story of Joseph because it gets more and more interesting. Uh, it gets <laughs> quite incredible. As you will see, it builds up to a crescendo. But that's just the introduction there, the story of Joseph who was lost from his brethren, sold to slavery, but became second to Pharaoh and eventually Pharaoh in Egypt. Well, thanks for listening and have a great day.